In this edition of Locked On Capitals, your Washington Capitals beat the Red Wings over the weekend, but they lose to the Blue Jackets. And then the Caps make a round of cuts as Hershey opens camp on Monday. We'll talk about all of that and more next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. And when you're on YouTube, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And if you like the videos, give it a thumbs up. It really helps grow the channel. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. So in this edition, we are going to talk about the Capitals and the games over the weekend. And then we are going to talk about some of the cuts that have been made ahead of Hershey opening their camp on Monday. And some of the moves are a bit uh, tougher to swallow. Uh, we'll talk about that in this show. But just to get it going here, your Capitals take down the Red Wings on over the weekend. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty good game, kind of uneventful for the most part. John Carlson's goal midway through the second period turned out to be the offense the Caps would need on Friday night in Detroit. Lars Eller added a late empty netter to account for Washington's 2 to nothing margin of victory over the Red Wings at Little Caesar, Caesars Arena. Washington played a structured defensive game, limiting the Red Wings to just 19 shots on the night. From the time Carlson's goal until nearly the midpoint of the third period, the Caps held the Wings to just three shots at even strength over a span of 14 minutes and five seconds, and none came from inside of 30 feet away. So just a really solid game by the Caps, showing up playing really well. Defense has been structured, playing really well, and it didn't, as it turned out, it uh, they didn't need a whole lot of scoring power out there as the Caps just found a way to take down a Red Wings team that, you know, is going to be a bit more resurgent, but the final score two to nothing, and that turned out to be enough. It was one of the games that was a bit harder to watch. Um, there was only a stream that I found on from the Red Wings, and there was no volume on it. So it was kind of an odd game to listen to. And then uh, the game against the Jackets, that was a tougher one too. I had a hard time finding the stream on that until I saw that it was available on NHL.com. So these preseason games are a little bit tough sometimes to watch. I know that years ago, you know, virtually none of the games were were viewed. Um, so it is just a good step, I guess, that they're having some of them on there. But I was able to uh, watch the game with no volume. Um, halfway through their six-game preseason slate now, the Caps have permitted five goals in three games with just two of those shots coming five on five. I really like the way we played in Philly on Wednesday, Coach Laviolette said. We did some good things against Buffalo. It kind of went in spurts. They were on us and we were on them against Buffalo. But in Philly, I thought we were really good defensively. And tonight, again as well, it's a mixed lineup for the opposition. But still, I think that defensively, we were pretty tight. Making his uh, first start in net for, for the Capitals was Darcy Kemper. And he was spotless in the game's first half, stopping all nine shots he faced on the night. He Made a few difficult saves among the bunch, stopping Michael Rasmussen from in tight on the power play in the first and making a pair of good saves from point blank range in early minutes of the second. His best stop of the game came ahead of the five minute mark of the third when he flashed the right pad to deny uh, Pius Suter from the top of the paint. And, you know, just a really um, encouraging sign to see Darcy Kemper show up and play a really solid game. And I wasn't really doubting him, but uh, to just see it, you know, in actuality, we saw what we had in Darcy Kemper on the avalanche last year. But, uh, you know, up until this point, it's just been kind of uh, speculation and conjecture of, you know, what kind of goalie he was going to be for the cap. So, you know, I know it's a preseason game and it's his first action, but still just a really um, exciting uh, thing to see him playing so well. 
Following a scoreless first half of the game, each team made a goaltender change at 11.30 of the second period. A little over three minutes later, the Caps broke the seal of the score sheet on a sustained offensive zone shift that culminated in a passing sequence and the game's first goal with the Wings chasing the pucks and the Caps around the Detroit. Evgeny Kuznetsov spotted Lucas Johansson activating on the left side, pinching down in the left circle. Johansson accepted the feed and snapped it right back to the opposite side for Carlson, who also jumped up in the play. Carlson finished the tic-tac-toe sequence for a one to nothing Washington lead and just a really Again, just the Caps showing up to play and playing really well. I know they had that game that was a little bit rough against the Sabres, but then they played good against Philly. And then also they played well in Detroit. So just a really positive sign. Uh, We were in there for a little uh, while, recounts Johansson. Kuzi was all over the zone and we were just kind of everywhere. And then he's got a good vision, obviously. So I just figured I'd go for a lane. And then I saw Johnny out of the corner of my eye. He was ready for it. And yeah, it was great. Carlson's goal came on the fourth shot faced by goaltender Victor Bratstrom after he entered the game in relief of starter Vili Husso. The two sides traded unsuccessful power play opportunities late in the middle of the period and the Caps carried their slim lead into the third Uh, With just over a minute in the third, Eller wheeled and fired from the half wall in his own end, displaying his usual long-distance prowess in his outing of the preseason. It was just nice to get some game action, said Kemper of his first game in a cap sweater. It was my first real game action with this group in front of me, and I love the structure we played with today. We played tight. It wasn't a ton of work, but it was nice to get out there for sure. And it was a good thing to get out there and see what the Caps had in Kemper because. You know, I I know a lot of times they kind of hold these starting goaltenders or starting players, you know, until the very end. But so for him to get some action and for the Caps to be able to see what they have in him was uh, was a relief for one, because, you know, I think that some people are saying, you know, he played well in front of Colorado's defense. But to see him, you know, humming along and playing well with the Caps in his first preseason game was promising. All right. So in the second game over the weekend, the Jackets down the Caps. So that was a tough one. Again, that was one of the games that I had to search, you know, kind of high and low to find the feed for it. But the Jackets down, the Caps 2-1. to one. These are both from NHL.com and Mike Vogel, respectively. Um, Chechenov's goal at 646 of the third period snapped a 1-1 to tie with the Capitals stood up as the game winner in a 2-1 to Columbus victory on Saturday night in Columbus. His goal gave the Blue Jackets their first lead of the night and enabled them to overcome the Caps, who had the better of the territorial and possession battles over the game's first 40 minutes. Jackets goalie Elvis Merzlikens went the distance, making 34 saves to earn the victory. One of his best stops of the night came in the waning seconds of the contest with the Caps vying for the equalizer with a sixth attacker after stopping Anthony Mantha's bid. From down low on the right side, Merzlikens slid across and denied Eric Gustafson's rebound attempt with 15.7 seconds remaining in regulation. And that's when you kind of saw Merzlikens kind of rise to the challenge and you realize what kind of goaltender that Columbus has in him. And, uh, you know, the the, the Jackets kind of went all in on Merzlikens and I think it's going to pay off for that team. You know, that was a team that kind of swung for the, sense, for the fences, excuse me, and they got Johnny Goudreau, Johnny Hockey out there. So, you know, if they can get that, you know, consistent net minding out there with Elvis Merzlikens, I think that Columbus is going to be a formidable opponent for the Capitals this season as they beat the Caps in this first preseason game. But going through the season, I do think that they have a pretty good team in front of them. You know, kind of the thing out there was that, you know, I know they got Johnny Goodrow, but what kind of team do they have behind him? Well, I think that Elvis Merzlikens is a pretty good netminder, and uh, I think that that Jackets team is going to be one to contend with. I thought there were some good looks and some good chances, said Coach Peter Laviolette. We kept the puck on the wall in a lot of offensive zone. We couldn't get in the middle, but when we did, we had some good looks and chances, and he made some good saves out there. It's tough. You're going in the third period, and you think you're doing the right thing, and it comes back, and it just takes one time, and it's in the back of your net. But I thought the guys played hard. It was a pretty good showing. And I think all things considered, I think the Caps did play pretty well. Obviously not the result that they were looking for, but that's what these preseason games are for. It's for assessing talent. You know, it's always a positive thing if you can win a game. But at the end of the day, what it's all about is seeing what you have, 
so you can make the cuts that need to be made. Playing for the second time in as many nights, the Caps got off to a start in Saturday's game. Before the first television timeout, Washington managed to draw a penalty in its own ice after moving it up and getting an extra skater for goaltender Charlie Lindgren. The Caps took a one to nothing during the delayed penalty. And then the next player to talk about and one to really look out for is Protus, still on the team, um, kind of that big frame. I'm kind of thinking he has a spot on this team. There, I'm going to talk about a little bit later here. There were some cuts made, and Protus is still on the team, and I think that you know they're kind of keeping him on the team for that big frame, that big body uh, in Tom Wilson's absence. Alexi Protus missed wide of a shot. Merzlikin set aside Trevor Van Riemsdyk shot from the point. Merz Leakins also stopped Mantha's long drive from the right side, but Protus was there to bury the rebound at 7-0-1 of the first and a one to nothing Caps lead. And uh, that was the story of the game. It's just that things, um, you know, didn't quite go the, the way the Capitals wanted, but I think... Um, that you know, like I'm saying, it's about assessing talent, and uh, I think that the Capitals all in all played pretty well, but you know, they just you know lost control at certain moments. But there's a few changes, noticeably more aggressive, but a lot of communication, and some guys pulling us aside to make sure if we have any questions, they're answered. I think we're growing, and it feels right. Um, then later, Protus uh, goes on to say he's working hard, and they all are, says Laviolette, but he continually gets called back up because of his game and the way he is playing. It's training camp. We're here to evaluate all the players, and I thought he had another strong game. Protus is really skating hard. He's physical. He's on the puck. His effort is really good, so he is noticeable, and I do think they are taking notice. And again, I do think that he will crack the team. Where he fits into the lineup, I guess, remains to be seen. There are still some preseason ga games left to be played, but I do think that he has solidified uh, his spot on this team. And good for him that his hard work ethic uh, has really paid off. All right, so after the break here, we are going to talk about some of the first round of cuts that are made as Hershey opens their camp. On Monday, some of the, the faces and some of the names that I'm going to talk about are a little disappointing because I know they were really hoping for bigger and better things. We'll talk about that after the break. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted more energy. I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I wanted to see what the hype was about. Now I've been taking it for a few months and it doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It kind of has a mild tropical taste and I actually look forward to taking it each morning. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients includes for your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. Now, I personally take it because I have young children at home, and if you're a parent, you can relate. You need that extra energy. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, while still tasting good. Supports better uh, sleep quality and recovery. Supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third party testing. So, the importance of a multivitamin, and we all know it's important. Tons of people take some kind of multivitamin vitamin and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb ag1 is a small micro habit with big benefits it's the one thing you can do every single day to take care of yourself your subscription comes with a year's supply of vitamin d which is so important it costs less than three dollars a day you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit it's cheaper than getting all the different supp supplements yourself you're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season, which is coming up here. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance.
All right. Welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. In this episode, we are talking about the cuts that are made. These cuts that are made Sunday, um, you know, are, you know, kind of, you know, uh, hard for some people to handle. I know that a lot of the players uh, that made camp had high and lofty goals for making this team. Not all of them are going to achieve their their goals. Uh, as we talked about, Protus is still on the team. But one player that, um, you know, I guess I got to say is a bit more disappointing than others is Hendrix LaPierre. And Hendrix LaPierre came into camp, you know, with a lot of swagger and a lot of confidence that I'm going to, you know, be the guy for the job. But uh, ultimately, he never really showed up on the score sheet. So I think that it would be he would be best served to play in Hershey. You know, he played juniors primarily primarily last year. So for him to get that time to kind of stew, if you will, uh, and play in the AHL, which is a legitimate hockey league, it is professional hockey. After all, it is just one step down from the NHL. So for him to get that real world experience, I think will help, you know, move his game along. So, you know, perhaps maybe later this year or perhaps next year, he will be ready for the big team, but disappointing nonetheless. Um, I, you know, you're kind of uh, sympathetic towards LaPierre because he came in uh, so confident uh, this story and, Washington Hockey Now, Capitals prospect Hendrix LaPierre entered training camp with a chip on his shoulder and a determination to make the team once again after cracking the 21-22 opening night roster. However, things didn't go exactly as planned. LaPierre saw his run come to an end on Sunday when he was loaned to the Hershey Bears with the AHL club's training camp kicking off on Monday. He was one of eight cuts on Sunday as the team also assigned best friend Vincent Iaro to the Bears while placing six on waivers. Beck Malenstein, Garrett Pilon, Gabriel Carlson, Bobby Nardella, Dylan McElrath, and Zach Fucale. So they were placed on waivers in hopes of clearing waivers and making it down to Hershey. And I understand that these are the things that have to be done. But with that being said, a bit, a bit of a risky move. I mean, I understand that these are moves that had to be made. But uh, could you imagine if someone did claim a Zach Fucale or a Big Beck Malenstein out there? You know, or, you know, if you want to even take a look at Bobby Nardella, who was injured last year, but really kind of showed up in camp. You know, I think that that would be kind of a big loss. So right now, the big players that are on the camp at this moment, as I record this at 8.09 uh, Central Time on Sunday, is Snively in protest. So I think that they are going to get their opportunity to make this team. And, you know, Snively is kind of one of those interesting players. When he came to this team, everyone kind of thought he came here to make a cameo because, you know, he is this Washington, D.C. kid that, you know, started from the, the earliest ages in Washington. And now isn't that great? He still plays hockey. Wouldn't it be something if that kid played on the Capitals? Well, guess what? He made the most of his opportunity, really showed up and played well. And, uh, you know, some just misfortune, I guess you could say, as he was injured last season. But again, he came into camp this year determined. And as it stands right now, like I said, it's Snively and Protus out there who are going to really, you know, vie for the remaining jobs of what's left. Now, is there the possibility that the two of those guys or one of them gets sent down? Sure. Snively's case is a bit more complicated because if he does, he is going to have to clear waivers. And you got to think, like I talked about with Malenstein and Fucale and those other guys, Nardella, that there is the possibility of losing them. And that's a risky move, but it's kind of part of the game. And, you know, some of the fans out there, it's understanding the difference between a one-way deal and a two-way deal. And, uh, you know, I think to a certain extent, the one-way deal is attractive for the player because they're going to get paid the same if they're in the NHL or the AHL. Uh, where the two-way deal is they get paid to two different things and they can get um, sent down to Hershey without having to clear waivers. So kind of a risky move, but, uh, you know, I'm hoping obviously that uh, the Caps don't uh, lose um, any of those players listed there. But getting back to LaPierre, and, you know, again, he he came into camp with a chip on his shoulder, wanting to prove to the world that he belongs um, in, in to, with the Washington Capitals. But ultimately, this year, as of right now anyway, uh, it's not meant to be. Although LaPierre is a top pr prospect who has made a lot of progress with some strong showing, him being sent to the AHL is a win-win for both sides. The 20-year-old didn't have too strong of a preseason going scoreless through three games and not standing out too much through, through the camp. He also didn't get any time up with the main group amid difficult decisions and a few uh, vacancies available. However, he did show potential. 
And uh, I'm not writing off uh, Hendrick Slop here. I still do think that he is going to make this team at some point, whether he gets a call up based on injury, whether, you know, they need it for making a, you know, a big cup push towards the end of the year, whatever the case may be. So if it's not this year there, I listed a couple possibilities for him coming up this, this year, but if not this year, I do see him as long as he continues to progress down in Hershey and say he doesn't suffer a major injury, I do think that he is on track to make the big team next year. Um, but, you know, a, a lot is going, he's going to have to prove himself in Hershey. They're not just going to give him that job just because of where he was drafted. But, you know, he is one of the crown jewels uh, in the Caps organization as far as futures and prospects. So um, let's let's hope that he does have a good year uh, in Hershey. LaPierre did much better in the faceoff dot this season and was more confident while skating and moving the puck. He was also much better positioning himself than he did his rookie outing, and he didn't shy away from the puck battle or physicality either. Lop here also put on several pounds of muscle going into camp and his strength showed. And that's what we can hope for is progress. And he did show progress. He showed signs that he did some of the things that he needs to do. Now he is going to have to continue on uh, doing the rest of that. All right. So after the break, we will continue to talk about some of the uh, cuts that the Capitals made today and uh, where they stand and how many of those players might get call-ups. We'll talk about that next. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. In this edition, we are talking about some of the cuts going on around the Capitals and some of the tough moves that were made, and they are tough moves. Um, as we talked about, Hendricks Lop here getting sent down and uh, Vincent Iaro, um, Iario, excuse me, so you know, again, some tough moves that are made, but some of the ones that I, the players that I'm, I'm worried about, let's talk a little bit more is Vincent um, Iario, which I know he's going down to Hershey, but the guys that actually have to go through waivers, uh, those are the ones that, uh, you know, a little, are a little bit more concerning. I know the Capitals picked up Gabriel Carlson in the off season, kind of as a possibility out there. They picked him up from Columbus and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if it's not going to hap, you know, help out this Caps team, then it will end up helping out that Bears team, which is important too, uh, because that is ultimately where it's a good training ground. Of course, the Bears want to do good this season, but ultimately it's about pushing those players up to the big team, the Washington Capitals. So let's hope that the development in most of those players that are in Hershey kind of, you know, stand on track, you know, your IRO. Let's hope that, you know, he had a really good mini camp. He had a good camp, but he was cut. So another younger player that I ultimately think will find a role on this team uh, in coming years. He is a younger man, so he might be a couple years out. I guess it remains to be seen. As we all know that this Capitals team, you know, is uh, always in kind of a rebuilding mode. Uh, but I don't think that any wholesale changes, you know, like fire sales, tear it down to the studs. I don't think that will happen until after the Alex Ovechkin era, which he's under contract for the next four years. So, I mean, that's just, you know, my take on it as of right now. Say the Caps tank really bad this year, then, you know, that could change, you know, obviously. But I think, you know, just based on what we've seen, the big acquisitions that have made, your Dylan Strom, your Connor McMichaels, or excuse me, Connor Browns, those are going to help solidify uh, you know, those holes or those positions of need, you know, people were worried about Tom Wilson, you know, who's going to fill that role. Brian McClellan addressed it by signing Connor Brown, Dylan Stroh in place of Nick Backstrom, those kind of things. So I think that the Capitals are in a good position, but you know, just getting to the players that were cut down, um, you know, and like I said, it is unfortunate to see um, some of those players get sent down. You know, you take a look at someone like Malenstein and Pilon had strong showings uh, coming up, showing their ability as Malenstein laid on physicality and Pilon had a good net front presence. McElrath and Carlson, an off-season off addition, were decent on the back end. And Malenstein is a guy that they really hope you know, can clear waivers because, you know, those big frames, those guys that are tough on the puck, the, their ability to to up that physical game, you know, they're, they're not a dime a dozen. And just because you're a big frame doesn't mean that you're necessarily an intimidator. If you want to take a look at a good example, take a look at Anthony Mantha, who's not intrinsically a tough guy. He's got this big frame, but he's like kind of, I don't know what to do with, it, with this big frame. Um, but uh, I mean, he can shoot the puck well, but he's not your Tom Wilson type who's going to be smashing people into the corner. 
And someone like Beck Malenstein fits that role. So the Capitals, like I say, you know, I'm talking about this as a fan and I'm hoping, you know, the Capitals organization as a whole hopes that those players are going to able to clear waivers, most notably in this case, uh, Beck Malenstein. Uh, but, uh, you know, like I say, that is is part of the problem. Another one, Zach Fucali, uh, the number three for the Capitals. Fucali got in some great games and came up with some big saves as he continues his development. He will be number one in Hershey with Darcy Kemper and Charlie Lindgren making up the Washington tandem. Fucali split time with Phoenix Copley down with the Bears last season, but with Copley now in L.A., he is the likely starter. Some notable names still at camp include Alexi Protas and Lucas Johansson, who could very well make the opening night roster. So Lucas Johansson on the blue line. Lucas Johansson is a guy that we've heard about for years uh, making this team. When is he going to make this team? And uh, he's always, you know, sometimes hasn't showed up or sometimes, like I say, he's a bit prone to the injury bug. But let's hope for big things for Lucas, as there are, you know, there's not a lot of holes on the on the blue on the blue line. They're on the left side more than the right side. But with with a, you know some of the moves that have been made in the off season, hopefully there will be a role for him on on the team this year. Because you know, like I say, it's one of the names that you hear so many times. So. You know, kind of like Martin Faravari was a name you heard for a while and then finally was on the big team. Let's hope that you can get a big breakout season for, you know, um, like a, a Protoss or a Snively, one of these guys to, to make a big addition to this team. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for for these these players to come up and really kind of just to, to shine and to make a big impact on this team. And uh, like I said, let's hope for some bigger things um, from this team this year, because, you know, at some point these, these players need to, to break through. Thank you for making locked on capitals. Your first listen every day. Now make your second listen locked on NHL locked on experts. Give you a daily 30 minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked on NHL, your daily 30 minute NHL podcast. So, once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.